Merry Christmas, friend. We are all, as Americans, and by the way, we welcome those of you who watch around the world, and we're honored to have you as viewers. But as Americans, for sure, we are just way too busy. And part of the problem when you're very busy is that you don't have, or maybe you don't take time to ponder, to use your imagination, to just ruminate. You know, we all talk about meditation, and there's a verse in the Bible, or several verses that exhort us to meditate. Well, the word actually means to ruminate, to let something roll around in your mouth. Mm. Mm. It, it takes time. And maybe you have taken time during this Christmas season to ponder some of the events surrounding the birth of Jesus Christ. Maybe you haven't. And maybe this will be the moment that you get to do it. I'm not going to go fast because what we're going to talk about is so unfathomable. It deserves at least as much attention and time as it takes us to buy the gifts for the children or for our spouse or for our mom and dad. Let's start with the trip to Bethlehem. As you know, Joseph and Mary were both from the house of David. And when Caesar decided he was going to take a census, he was actually taxing people. And he wanted them to go to the land of their origin. Mary and Joseph were both in Nazareth. And from Nazareth to Bethlehem was about 160 kilometers, maybe a little bit more, roughly 100 miles. And they're doing this not in a car, not in a bus, not in a tram. They're doing it on foot. And she's nine months pregnant. Okay? The scripture says, she being great with child. I want to give you something to ponder because a lot of us have rough things happen to us in our lives, things that we didn't plan on. And it's only after we look back that we can see the kindness and the hand of God in it or some purpose that God had. You might be in a situation right now where you were dealt a really rough hand, like uh, Joseph and Mary did. I mean, think about it. He wanted money. Caesar wanted money. And so he told everyone, go back to where you're from. Well, Nazareth was a fairly thriving town at that point, and Bethlehem, not so much. But the scripture said that out of Bethlehem of Judah would come the ruler to govern Israel. The promise of the Messiah being born was directly connected to the town of Bethlehem. And so God in his overarching providence maybe provoked Caesar to tax people just to get the Holy Family, Mary and Joseph and that baby inside of her tummy, mm -hmm. back to Bethlehem. And there might be some place that you're supposed to go or that I'm supposed to go. Some difficulty is what prods us along and I believe it was G.K. Chesterton that said, Inconvenience is the beginning of all great adventures. I can promise you it was an inconvenience for them to go from Nazareth to Bethlehem. And I mean, just picture yourself. Be, be, be a fly on the donkey. Picture this young couple, maybe him a little bit older than her, traveling. He had to go at a fairly slow pace. Those ladies watching who have had a baby, those husbands watching who know what your wife is like when she hits that eighth and ninth month, ninth month you know that nothing happens fast. So their traveling might have taken them eight, 10, maybe even 12 days to get there. Think of the potty stops. How do you get fresh water? What are we going to eat? All of these things are happening, and she is nine months pregnant. And I have a sneaking suspicion that both Joseph and Mary, who had been told by angels that Mary was carrying the Son of God, that they were both educated enough and devout enough and studied in the scriptures enough to know that this baby is supposed to be born in Bethlehem. I can really see the smirk on both of their faces saying, huh, so this is how it's all going to work out. We're just following orders. We're following what we're supposed to do. So, 
they arrive in Bethlehem. Now at that time, Bethlehem was a very small village and it was off the beaten path. It was to the south of Jerusalem. And there was not a lot of reason for people to go to Bethlehem. Bethlehem was a, a shepherd town, really. It's got spectacular caves, spectacular fields, places that make it easy to protect sheep at night. Mm -hmm. Very dry um, caves that you have a small opening and then open into a big area where a shepherd could keep a lot of sheep and he could literally guard the door, which is the opening of the cave. But it, it wasn't a metropolis. It wasn't a place where you'd say, hey, honey, want to go to Bethlehem and have dinner? Or if you were dealing in gold and silver and precious stones or spices from the east or any number of things, your destination was Jerusalem. So they're headed to this town that just doesn't have great accommodations. Life is like that for a lot of us. We would like to stay at a four-star hotel and we might just find ourselves in a cave. We'll, we'll talk more about that when we come back. Perhaps you have a business or a ministry or a message that you want to get out to multiple thousands of people. We have the avenue for you to do that. This show. We are currently seen on over 130 television stations, Monday through Friday, twice a night, 8 p.m. Eastern and 1 a.m. Eastern, and then all times are local. Our advertising rates are so competitive, you'll wonder, why didn't I go to Randall Terry first, all right? Literally, you can reach into these 130 cities for about 50 cents a day per city. Do the math. That's an incredible bargain and you'll be reaching the type of viewer that you want to buy your product or to hear your message. Contact us as soon as you can. We'll talk about the rates, we'll talk about cutting the commercial for you, and you can reach a lot of people. Welcome back, friend. By the way, if you didn't remember this, Bethlehem in Hebrew means the house of bread. And Jesus said, I am the bread who came down from heaven. He is the bread of life. And I hope that you, during this Christmas season, get to partake of him, the bread of life. So, Mary and Joseph finally arrive at Bethlehem. Now, who knows if they had given much thought. Where are we going to stay? Well, we'll go to the local inn. Well, the local inn might be four or five steps below a Motel 6. And oh my goodness, there's a lot of people that are somehow related to David and they all had to travel to Bethlehem at the same time and they got there earlier than Mary and Joseph because they weren't, you know, coming along at a snail's pace because they had a nine-month pregnant woman. So when they get there, they go to the inn and there's no room. Now please hear me. I want to thank my wife for this one. It was the mercy of God. And there's a lot of things that happen to us that we wish wouldn't. Watch me, listen to me. Think of who would have been in that inn. Mm -hmm. Every sort of riffraff. Think of the noise. Think of people drinking, them running around trying to find all the pomegranate wine that they can possibly find. People never met, trading stories. Some people would have been rowdy. Some people would have been obscene. <clears throat> Is that the place that you, mom, want to have a baby? I don't think so. And so they luck out. God in his goodness has gone before them and there's a cave. And oh, look, the cave is dry and it's quiet and Mary is not delivering a child in the corner of a noisy, smelly, riotous tavern. She's by herself with her betrothed and the angels that God has sent around them. And she delivers the Savior, the Son of God, in a cave. And also, think about the words of Jesus about John the Baptist. 
because they really apply to him as well. I mean, Jesus said, did you go to the wilderness to see a great man? You know, fine robes. There are elements to our faith that are so mind-boggling that they're, they, they border with our human reasoning almost on the insane. Wait a minute. This child is the savior of the human race, God incarnate. Truly God and truly man. And you're going to have him born in a manger, in a stable, in a cave where there's animals around and hay. Well, let's get some clean hay. Well, quick, clean up some of this sheep droppings. I mean, it was still a cave. It shows a lot of things, and one of them that can come back to us is what our priorities are and what matters. All of us would like a life of ease. All of us would like nice things. All of us would like to go to a different city and stay in the finest hotel. But God the Father gave us God the Son to be our Savior in a manger. And there are difficulties that we will endure, but in retrospect we can see, ah, oh, this makes perfect sense. I'm sure that Mary just clung on to Joseph at some point and said, thank God, thank you, honey, for finding this place. Maybe in the distance they could hear the riotous noise coming from the inn, and they were just so glad that they weren't there. And so remember that in times of disappointment, that there might be something that you really wanted and you got something else, but then you can see the hand of God in it. And let us just together marvel as you've seen these pictures of what these cave, caves look like, let's just marvel that God, who made heaven and earth, deigned to join us in the flesh with his opening breaths in a shepherd's cave. I'll be right back. As a Christian leader and as a public speaker, I've had the privilege of speaking in some of the largest events in America, some of the biggest pulpits in America. I've spoken at the late Jerry Falwell's Thomas Road Baptist Church, and I've spoken inside of the Vatican. I also would be honored to come and to speak in your community. If you have an event where you need a public speaker and you want to talk about pro-life, you want to talk about marriage, you want to talk about political activism, you want to talk about the threat of Islam. There's many issues that I'm fairly well read on and can speak to your group. If you need a speaker for a fundraising event, I've done many of them and helped people raise hundreds of thousands of dollars over the years. So, I'm available to you. If you'd like to talk to me about coming into your community to speak at your event, contact us at the web address or the phone number that you see on the screen. Merry Christmas, friend. This Christmas narrative that I'm bringing to you is very personal to me because we are in Memphis for this Christmas, and we didn't plan on it. We didn't want it. We're here because our son, Michael Winston, is being treated for cancer. He's fighting for his life and he's being treated at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. So this is our journey that we didn't expect to take. And, and I don't know what puts you in front of the TV tonight. Mm -hmm. Maybe your whole family is around you and you're just taking a minute to watch this. Or maybe you're alone. Maybe you're having a glass of wine or some other strong drink because you're just lonely and a little depressed and you've been channel surfing. Stick with me. If nothing else, you'll get to look at some really great images of the birth of our Savior that Lane brings to your attention. But beyond that, maybe these moments together will bring you a little bit of consolation and, and spur you on to look at your Savior, the baby, the Christ child. Well, clearly God Almighty was not going to come to this world and not have some type of announcement. And once again, we see God doing something that's just, in, in, the, in the human sense, is so peculiar. He sends an angel. Where does he send the angel? 
he sends the angel to the shepherds. Now, before I read it, I want you to just think of what these shepherds were like, all right? They were on the lower strata. They were really hardworking. They probably didn't get a lot of opportunity to bathe. They were sleeping with sheep, waking with sheep, carrying sheep that were injured on their shoulders, literally. And God doesn't go to the Pharisees. He doesn't go to the priests. He doesn't go to the rulers of Jerusalem. He goes to shepherds and tells them. And I'm going to read to you from this narrative because it's just, it's so delightful. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. <laughs> You'd be afraid too. I mean, we'd all be terrified. And this is, of course, before the creation of lights. So it wasn't like they were used to somebody throwing on a switch. If somebody was able to light a candle in the fields, it would have been an itty bitty, maybe an owl can see it, light from a distance. No, this was a million lumens, whatever they're called, the, the, the million candle power comes out and says, and lo, the, and it says, and the angel said unto them, fear not. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, that's Bethlehem, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. There are a lot of people who have a sign or who have something come their way. I mean, the angels appeared. The shepherds could have said, whoa, that was crazy. That was freaky. Did you see that? I saw it. Man, well, let's go back to sleep. You, you got all your sheep? Yeah, I got mine. Okay, good. They had to get up and they had to go. They had to seize the moment. And if you're in a situation where things have happened that you didn't expect or a message has come to you that you didn't expect, Stop what you're doing. Seize the moment. And, and even in your chair, if you're there alone tonight and it's really hard on you, seize the moment and say, Lord, what am I supposed to see? Show me. Mm -hmm. Be like the shepherds. Try and figure it out. I'll be right back. I'm inviting you to not only watch this program, but invite your friends to do it. This show airs on over 130 television stations around the country, 8 p.m. Eastern, and again, 1 a.m. Eastern, all times local. But you might have a friend in another city who can't get it on their television set. They can watch it live on their computer if they want. They can stream it from their computer right onto their television set, as so many do today. That's why Hulu and Netflix and other companies have gotten so big. People are actually using their computer to watch television on their TV set or on their desktop or their laptop. So there's no cost and you can invite your friends to watch this program live at 8 p.m. Eastern or 1 a.m. Eastern on their computer Monday through Friday. And oh, by the way, you can take advantage at our website of gazillions of tools to make you a better Christian. Christmas is almost here, and many of us are going through that annual struggle. What do I buy him? What do I buy her? In other words, there's a list of people in our lives that we need to or want to buy gifts for, and we just don't know what to get them. May I recommend not a tie and not chocolate this year? But 
the new DVD series, What Would Mohammed Do? Islamic Terrorism Explained. This is a serial documentary, something like you might see on Discovery Channel or PBS, that has eight hours of material. And you won't think it's eight hours. You'll be thinking, where'd it go? I want more, I want more. I'm encouraging you, friend, get this. Get multiple copies. And the more copies you get, the greater the discount. I'm letting you know, there are people who are gonna watch this after you give them this as a Christmas gift, and they're gonna thank you and say, this is one of the best gifts I've ever gotten. Welcome back, friend, and Merry Christmas to you. Hope that you are having a blessed, blessed time this Christmas. But, but if you're having a difficult time, I pray that you are still blessed with some sense of the peace and the love that Jesus has for you, even in this hardship. And you might say, well, if he loves me, why is this happening? Well, stay with me. There might be an answer coming that surprises you, and you'll look back and say, okay, all right, I get it now. So back to the story. The shepherds had been told by the angel what was going on and it says they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger and when they had seen it they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child and all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds but Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart so Mary knew what had happened to the shepherds. They all would have come, however many there were, they would have been looking into various caves and asking questions, being spies, being private investigators, and finally they find the Holy Family, and sure enough, there's this baby. Guys, guys, over here, because they would have been going all, to all the different caves. And sir, with their broken, perhaps poor grammar words, sir, we're sorry to disturb you. Let us explain. We, we know that your wife is here and that you've just had a baby, but please let us explain. And so they recount to Joseph, and Mary can hear it in the other room, that an angel had just appeared, all these things. I'm sure that Mary and Joseph had some sense of shock and awe. And Mary just kept all of these things in her heart and pondered them, clearly pondered them for years. And then it says, and the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Now picture Mary and Joseph. Picture the trip. Picture the, the fear of not having proper shelter and then finding this and being happy and thankful. A lot of hard things had happened to Mary and Joseph along the way. A lot of false accusations about the origin of this child. The rumor wasn't that she was carrying the Son of God. The rumor was that she was carrying an illegitimate child. A lot of hard things happened to them. But the shepherds were glorifying and praising God. You might be in the middle of something very hard, but when God works the whole thing out for you, and you begin to tell others, others might be blessed and benefited and they might start glorifying and praising God for what you have learned in this and what good things happen to you because of this. Clearly, the coming of the Christ child was great news for these shepherds. It meant that a savior was born. And all of us, at some level, if we're Christians, we bear the Savior to others. And it's sometimes in hardship that the aroma of Christ comes into our lives. But if we can embrace what's going on and then share it with others, they will be blessed. They will glorify God. And you'll be okay in the final analysis. Hang in there. Merry Christmas. Thank mm -hmm. you.